Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So this video is the continue of React portfolio. If you haven't watched the previous video, please make sure to go to my channel and watch them. So in this video, we will implement React Select in this project. So let me show you what I'm gonna implement in this video. As you can see, I have a slider in recent project component. And if I slide to the right, I can slide it and I can slide to the left. And as you can see, if I hover the middle one, the description will pop up. So in this project, I will show you how to grab the active class of React Select Slider and also make the other slides to not be hoverable. And I will show you how to implement your custom arrows. And react select so let's get started now I just open the react select website and copy this code to install the library in my application once we are done installing this library I need to copy these links and inside the index.html I just remove these extra codes and write a comment for my slider then paste the links here now I just start the app by using npm start in the terminal okay now it is time to make our project's component I just make a new folder and under this folder, I will have a new file and call it project.jsx. Now I just generate the React code here and then import this component in app.js to display in the DOM. Alright, in our project's component, we add a container div. Give it the same size as other components. Now in app.js, we need to add another div for projects components. Call it down here and give it a background color. Okay. Now inside the container, we need to have an H1 for recent projects. But again, we want the project text to be green. And then a P tag for our description. Under the container, we add a padding of three rim for top and bottom, and zero for left and right. And a text align of center. For the H1, we need to have a font size of 1.9 rim and for p tag we need to have a width of 28 rim margin 0 auto padding of 1 rim and 0 and finally a font size of 0 0.9 rim okay now our title and description is ready and it is time to implement the sliders so first of all, I add a div and call it slide. And inside it, we need to have a slider component, which we haven't made it yet. Now, I call the div down here again for styling. So I just make a component for slider. Make sure to import it in projects component. Now you can see our slider component in the DOM. Now let's open the select slider website. If I click the documentation, under the example tab, you can find bunch of different slider style. But for this project, we need the responsive one. I just copy the seating variable and paste it in my project component. Now 
when it imports the slider from React Lib. And inside this, we will have our previous div, but copy it for multiple times. Then pass the setting to the slider. Now you can see the text are sliding in the DOM. But the slider is so close to our title and we need to add a gap. So I just open the developer tool and we need to find the container of this slider. Now you can see that this class is the container of our slider. So if I add a padding to this class, you can see a gap will be added between the slider and the title. So I just copy this class and paste this inside the index.css. Then we give it a padding of 3 rin and zero. All right, now let's make our actual project slider. So I just delete these tips and instead I add a project component. We need to make this component and import it in slider component. So if I copy and paste this component, you can see that they are sliding. Okay, now inside the project component, we add a container div, and inside of it, we need an image, and then a div with the class of disk. So this div will be our description div that will pop up on top of our image once we hover the image. So inside this div, we will have an h1 for title, a p tag for details, and finally, an href link that directs us to the demo site. For this image, I just paste this image URL. Now, you can see we have them all in our DOM, but we still need to add many styles. So I come back and under the container div, I give it a height of 10 rim and a background color. Then a margin 0 for top and bottom, and 0 0.5 frame for left and right. A padding of 0 0.5 frame, a border radius of 5 pixel, and cursor of pointer. Now you can see the background is in good shape, but we need to add a width for our image. So I grab the image tag and give it a width of 100%, a height of 100%, and the object width of cover. Now you can see that our image and backgrounds are in good shape. All right, now let's style our description D. So I grab this class and add a position absolute, and because we don't want it to overflow, we add a position relative to its parent, which is container. And then we need to add an overflow of heading. So we need to add a right zero, left zero, bottom zero, text align left, padding 0 0.5 frame, and this background color. Then for the H1, we only give it a font size of 1 rim. For the P tag, we add a weight of 90%, a font size of 0 0.8 rim. And inside this, we need to grab the href tag. So we add a margin left of 0 0.4 rim and a color of red. I think we add this code in wrong direction, so I just grab them all and put them under the disk class. And also we need to move our HF tag inside the P tag to put them beside each other. 
All right, now they are looking good. So let's implement the hover. So I add a hover to the container that has image. And then give it a transform scale of 1.3. Now you can see if I hover, the image will pop up. But we need the image to pop up so smoothly. So I just add a transition to the image tag. Now you can see that the image is popping up so smoothly. Alright guys, now let's style our description. So I just come back to the disk class and instead of this button 0, I add button minus 10 ring. Now you can see that the description is gone. Okay, now we need to grab the description using hover. So again, Inside the container, I add a hover that has description, and inside of that, I add a button as zero. Now you can see that if I hover the image, the description is coming up. And again, to make it smoothly, we add a transition to our disk class. Now you can see our description is popping up so smoothly. Now I think our slider padding is too much, so we need to decrease this. So I come back to my index.css and change the tree rim to 0.5 rim. Now you can see we have a little space between the title and slider, and that's looking good. Okay guys, we are done with the styling, so now it is time to give a unique data to each of these components. So I just come back to the slider component and we will have some data stored inside of this array that called data. Okay, now to push this data to our project component, I just come under the slider component, I write a variable and call the slider project and assign this empty string to this. And now we map this data and assign that to our slider project string. And then, this map data will return our project component. So we pass the each item to this and also we need to have a key and our key is going to be the index of this data. Now to display this data, we need to just copy this slider project variable and write that inside of this slider. Now we need to grab this data inside our projects using props, and then we need to destructure these props. So I write cons, image and descriptions which comes from props.item. Now we need to change the value of our component. First I change the image with the search is going to be img and then the description is going to be our disk. Now you can see our slider is displaying different data. Alright guys, so in this slider we do need these dots. To remove that, I just go back to the slider.js6 and set these dots to false. And also in responsive part, I also make it false. Now we want the slider to show only three cards on the desktop version, two cards on tab version, and finally one card on mobile screens. Now it is time to style the middle card. So we want it to be a little bigger than the others. So I come back to the select documentation and copy this line of code. It has a class of center and center mode of true. 
and it will center all the slider. But you can see that they are in one side. So I just come, I just come back to the slider component and add a true to infinite. Now you can see that they are sliding infinitely. Now let's find what class holds this middle card. So I just inspect and select documentation and you can see that this class holds the middle card. If I hide this color, you can see that the color is gone and also the transform will be gone too. Now this class is the container of this H1 and this H1 is the child of this. So I just copy this class and paste that inside the index.css. And because this is a container class, we need to have a child for this. So I go back to the project.jsx and I just add a class in container and name that project. So I write the project class following the select class as a child and then inside that I add a transform scale of 1.3. Now you can see that the middle card is over other cards and it's bigger than the other cards. Now I just add a Z index of 10,000 so it should be on top of other sliders. For sliding smoothly, I add a transition to the project class. Now you can see that our components are broken from top and bottom. And that is because we have less padding. So I just come back to index.css and change this 0 0.5 frame to 1.5 frame. Now you can see that our cards are looking really good. Now if I hover over each single of these cards, the description is popping up. But I just want the middle one to pop up. So to do that, I need to check what class the rest of our cards hold. I go back to the developer tools and check the class. Now you can see that the H1 holds the center class. If I click the opacity, you can see that the opacity will be gone. So I just grab the center class and add my project class. Inside that, I add an opacity of 0 0.7 and a pointer event of 9. Now you can see that all my cards are not hovering. So I go back to index.css and add a pointer even all to my center div. Now you can see that only the center slide is hovering. And we need to bring the opacity of the center to 1. Now you can see that the center card is much brighter than the other card. Alright guys, so now it is time to implement the responsive part. I open the inspect, so if I make the screen size smaller, you can see that our brighter card is not in the center anymore. So to solve this problem, I go back to slider component and inside slider setting, we change our breakdown size first. Then. Inside the index.css, I add a media query size and copy paste our center class. So we give a transform scale 1 to 8. Now you can see the middle one is same like others, but the others are still not touchable. So I come back to index.css, copy the project class and set the pointer to all. Now you can see that all cards can be touched. Okay, now if I make it more smaller, you can see that other component size is getting bigger. So we open the project component under the container div, 
we add a major query and give it a weight of 90%. Now it has a small size like other components. Alright, let's keep smalling our component. Now in a smaller size, we don't need this center mode anymore. So I open the slider component again and copy this center class and paste it inside my second breakdown. Just change the true to false. Now you can see that our cars do not have central mode anymore. Okay, I think in this size, we need to have three cars. So I add three slide show and one slide per click. If I make it smaller again, we have this center mode again. So I just make the center mode false in both of my breakdowns. Now you can see our cards are displaying good, but we need to change the weight of our P tag. So I come back to projects component and under the P tag, I add major query and give it a weight of 90%. Now it is not overflowing anymore. Alright guys, we are done with the responsive part. Now it is time to change our slider buttons. Actually, I don't want to change the style of slice buttons itself, but instead I add my own custom buttons. Let me show you how I am going to implement it. So I open the slider component and paste the icons from React icons. Now we need to remove the select slider arrows. So I add arrows false under the seating. You can see there is no buttons anymore. All right, now let's implement our own custom arrows. In slider component, I will first wrap everything with fragment. Then we are gonna have a button div and inside it, we add two buttons. The inner text are going to be our icons that we have imported from React icons. I'm going to call the div down here. And inside it, I grab the button tag and give it a width, a height, and a background color and remove the border. Now we are gonna add a position absolute to it so we can move it anywhere we want and add a position relative to its parent. But we don't have the parent yet. So I replace the fragment with container div. I'm gonna call this container down here and write position relative to it. Now we need to assign the top to 45% and right to minus one ring. Now you can see there are beside each others, but we need to separate them from each other. So we are gonna add class back for the backward button and class next for the forward. So I grab the backward class and give it left minus one rim. Now you can see that they are in both sides of the slider. Okay, now let's implement the functionality. So to connect these buttons to our slider, we are going to use use rep. Under the project's component, I write const arrow rep equal to use rep. And the initial value is going to be null. Now we pass this rep in our slider component. For the backward button, we add an onClick arrow function arrowRef.current.selectPrev. Now you can see the prev button is working perfectly. Similar to prev button, we add an onClick to the next button, but change the select prev to the select next. Now you can see our buttons are working. Okay guys, thanks for watching this video.
Don't forget to like and share. See you in the next video.